I'm Jeff Landis. Some of you may already know me from the fact that I've already given a, another talk here. Uh, I'm with the NASA Glenn Research Center, and I wanted to talk today about a study that we did about a mission to not go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, as was pointed out in some of the plenaries, a good program should be accomplished in a series of achievable steps. And it would be nice if you can achieve these steps in a time that is comparable to, or at least not much longer than, uh, two presidential administrations. Because the next guy who comes in wants to change the plan. So here's a question. If you want to go to Mars, and despite what our esteemed leader and others have said, it's really hard to go to Mars. This is not something that's easy. What is a series of steps we can make that makes incremental progress toward the goal? And I'm not forgetting the goal. The goal is humans on Mars, permanently, colonizing Mars. Uh, but how do we make steps there, easy, achievable steps? Well, the next obvious step would be to orbit Mars. So is there a scientific justification to go into orbit around Mars without landing? Well, let me argue that there is. We can do telerobotic geological field exploration, the next best thing to being there. So my proposal is that we could do telerobotics from orbit. The advantage is that we don't have to develop a lot of the components. It is expensive to develop components. It is going to be very expensive to develop a Mars lander, a Mars ascent vehicle, Mars habitats, Mars spacesuits, all of this stuff has to be human rated, has to be very safe, very reliable, and very well tested, and very expensive. Well, telerobotics is here, something we can do now. Here's the NASA Johnson uh, robot, a proposal for a robot that can be implemented on the remote arm of the space station. Here's some of the components of Roganaut. Uh, we have very human light arms that can do manipulation. That gives you essentially the same capability as a human. Uh, we have actually very dexterous fingers that can be made in these robot hands, the dexterous robot manipulators. So in fact, uh, with a Roganaut-like technology, we can do something that is very much like being there. Well, with this concept, we decided to do a detailed design study using the COMPASS team, the NASA Glenn uh, Systems Analysis team, uh, to see what it would be like. And in fact, uh, just showing one of the points of using human exploration with real-time robotic operations is that we can go to a lot of places. We don't have to design a ascent, descent stage just for Mars. Uh, we can go explore Mars, we can explore a lot of small bodies, uh, we can explore Venus, the moon, asteroids. Uh, the person who put the, together the slide says, well, it's just like having the Starship Enterprise where you <laughs> stay in space and just sort of beam down your geology team on a beam of energy, which is what we do, except the energy now controls the field robotics. I do need to mention uh, this was not my personal study. This was a study with a lot of people uh, involved. Uh, this is the main uh, concept operation, some of the people doing some of the subsystems. Here's a couple of the, uh, the parts of it other than the, the main concept uh, of operations. Well, here's the overview is that we're focusing on sending a piloted spacecraft to orbit planetary bodies and we're going to avoid landing crews on the surface of Mars and anything with a deep gravity well. So we can go to small planetary bodies and perhaps, as the previous talk suggested, explore with the little man maneuvering units. Uh, but for large planetary bodies, we explore with tow robotics. The crew stays in the vehicle, and via tow robotics, they have a virtual reality sense of being there. Well, uh, start with the modest capability could be very simple. Here is one proposal for an asteroid mission capable vehicle. But to go for full capability, we need a pretty large vehicle uh, with habitats, a lot of tanks that can take us all the way to Mars orbit and back. 
So despite my telling you how this is compared to a Mars mission, a small and cheap mission, it's not that small, it's not that cheap. Now here's the number of launches that we need to go to Mars and do the full uh, conceptual operations. The point of this is in space is all about delta V, the velocity change you need to, to get to. So if we're looking at some modest capability, we might say, well, five kilometers per second is a modest delta V. There's a lot of places we can go with this modest delta V. We can certainly go to low Earth orbit, but we can go to the Lagrange points. I've never been a great fan of going to the Earth Lagrange points because there's actually nothing there. Uh, you don't really explore it because there's nothing to explore. It might be useful if we have telescopes there to do repair missions. Uh, but most notably, if we go to the Martian moons, uh, we can go there just a little bit more uh, than five kilometers per second. But we can get an orbit around Mars with a mere four kilometers per second. Uh, compared, I'm sorry, orbit around the, the moon with a mere four kilometers per second. And then orbit around Mars, a good orbit at about 5.7 kilometers per second. That compares with the surface way up here, uh, 10 kilometers per second to get down to the surface not even talking about getting back, just the whole uh, surface landing. Uh, and of course, all of the systems uh, costs tend to be exponential in the delta V. So compared to a human mission to the surface of Mars, uh, take a look at what we don't need to develop. Uh, we still need to develop a crew and a heavy lift launch vehicle, that's true for both. We still need a crew expor exploration vehicle. If we're going to the moon, we don't need the lunar lander, we don't need a habitat, we don't need other human-rated surface systems. We can explore moon with just as much. Going further to Mars, uh, well, okay, we need the transit vehicle. We don't need a separate cargo vehicle, because we don't need to carry all that cargo. We don't need the descent and ascent vehicle that's human-rated. We don't need a habitat surface vehicle. We don't need to develop fission power systems. We don't need to develop all of the other human rights systems. So just counting on the number of things that has to be developed, just count how many fewer systems need to be developed for the highly robotic remote operations. Uh, and then we can use that concept to drive a number of different vehicles. We could potentially drive airplanes, we could drive rovers, we have lot sample returns, uh, balloons, all sorts of different systems could be run by the same mission control. We focused in on one concept operations, uh, CONOPS, if I ever use that uh, term. And this is the concept of operations. Here's our crew vehicle. Uh, we're beaming down. We have a truck that carries the rovers around. And we have very small human equivalent rovers that we named the rock hounds that are actually exploring. I actually wrote to Harrison Schmidt and I said, well, how many astronauts do you need to do geological exploration at a site on the moon? Uh, I said, was two enough? Did you need more? Was that too many? And he said, no, two is about right. So the operations concept, in fact, has two of the robotic human equivalents on the particular site. We go in orbit. In fact, we pre-deploy uh, the robotic systems at three different sites on the surface. And then uh, a given science region, one of these regions, is 100 kilometers in diameter. This is all the places that we can get to in that 500-day mission. And then we can drive as much as a 10-kilometer traverse to a new location within that uh, region at a max speed of about a kilometer and a half an hour, about one mile an hour. Uh, we can drive to a new site. And since uh, we have an 18-month stay, 500-day stay, we can do a lot of sites as we need. Uh, so this is the first of our conceptual designs. Uh, this was the mobile teller robot. Uh, and actually, you know, wow, these are sort of weird objects. What are those? They're not exactly wheels, but they're not quite legs either. Uh, in fact, they're called wags. Uh, these are wheel legs. And we're using these wags because we were looking for something that is has high mobility capability, uh, but does not have a whole lot of mechanical complexity. So we worked with the Case Western Reserve 
biorobotics laboratory on these. So let's her play, I'll play the, the movie. Here is a Wayne's uh, robot. Uh, okay, so I guess I have to click it again to get it to play. thing in the Uh, 0.84 meters, these are pretty low. 
Uh, and here we have the